Welcome to the JHM Timing Belt replacement video for the 2.7T Audi engine. Um, we already got the bumper off of this car, the front, you know, the front supports off of the car. We're going to start right now with disassembling. I'm going to go over a couple things first before I start the disassembly though. Okay, what you're looking at here is you got the regular accessory belt or serpentine belt. You got the alternator. You got the tensioner pulley. You got the harmonic balancer, crank pulley, whatever you want to call it. You got the AC compressor. You got the fan pulley. And you got your power steering pulley. This is already off, but I'll be showing you how to remove it here in a second. The fan usually sits right here. But this is an overview right now. Um, this right here is one of your inlet pipes to your turbo. You can see a bolt goes here. So that's already undone. Another thing to get this off, it ends up hooking to the throttle body boot that tends to rip so you want to inspect this at this time it's usually a good time another thing it hooks to is the diverter down here and another th note about the diverters if they've never been changed you may want to look at replacing them now if you look at this one this one has one of the original you know clamp like squeeze together clamps not a screw on clamp you want to replace those with screw on clamps they tend to pop off especially if you chip the car or up the boost so these these pipes are pretty much unbolted and ready to go um, all it is is it's the two clamps, you know, for here and the diverter and then the one bolt down there. Um, one note about this bolt hole, you got one on each side. If this is stripped out or loose or coming free, make sure you fix it or replace the cover because if this falls in to the timing belt area, it will cause damage. I, I've seen that happen. So now that we're familiar with most everything, we're going to start the disassembly. I got the you know the by pipes off, and uh, quick note on this one: this somebody damaged this cover before, so don't expect to see that on yours. Yours should be one piece. Um, you can see the glue is dried up, but uh, just a note. So if you go wonder what the heck's going on with that cover, well, somebody broke it right here, snapped it off. Um, that's it for now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll start by removing this the fan. So I'm going to put the fan back on real quick to show you that. Okay, one of the first things to remove is the stock fan and fan clutch. At this point, we've already removed the fan itself. It usually bolts up like that. It has four five millimeter Allen heads. They're just sitting here. So I had already unscrewed these four five millimeter Allen heads and then took the fan off. It just gives you a little more room to get in there. And then the next thing I use is we got to get this off, the actual clutch for the fan. And it's got a big nut on the inside. Um, if you look closer, it's in there. And what you got to do is when you're doing this, this is counterclockwise. So you got to turn it in the clockwise direction to loosen it and counterclockwise to tighten it. So knowing that, you usually want to use a 27 millimeter open end wrench or my favorite, just a big crescent wrench. Get down and grab that, that bolt head right there. It's basically the whole thing. Um, another problem you run into is when you start loosening it, this one's already loosened, this pulley starts turning. And what I've made right here is this tool that slips in. They, I think they sell a tool. This is just like a three quarter inch thick piece of little bracketry. I don't know what it was used, something around the house. And I just found it and used it. So I'm going to undo this just to show you where this should go. But normally you would get this wedged up in here and then you would go ahead and turn it the clockwise direction to start loosening it. And it also helps to leave the belt on. When you leave the belt on, it, it helps grab it a little bit more. But the spot you want to slide it into is like right in here. Um, you can also, there's another spot over here, but you'll see it goes inside of this slot. And then it's going to drop into one of these crevices. So when you turn it, it, it just locks up and ledges in there. So you just got to make sure you have a piece of metal that will fit behind there. And this one does. This one's a little mangled, but it's about three quarter inch thick this way and then I don't know what about probably you know eighth of an inch not even that thick so it just sits in there and it's just a wedge and you just got to make sure it fits in there so just any piece of scrap metal you find and you can put a bend on it so it tucks behind this and once that's lodged in there nice and tight you just turn it the tightening direction clockwise and that'll break it free and then it'll unscrew and that's one of the harder parts for getting this all apart the next thing you need to get into is now taking the belt off the belt's held in with the tensioner, and the tensioner is very easy to loosen up. It's got a 17 millimeter like bolt head right here that makes it easy 
for you to loosen the tension. So a long, a long extension, uh, a 17 millimeter, um, a long ratchet, a open end of 17 millimeter, anything long helps. But you can see I get in there and it puts slack. So 17 millimeter, and then you just undo the belt. And at that point, the belt is now removed. Now that the belt is removed, we gotta start taking all the pulleys and all the covers off. The next thing I'm gonna remove then, I'm gonna remove the three six millimeter Allen bolts for the power steering pump. So there's six millimeter Allen bolts. These are easier done with the belt on, but I'm gonna use an impact, so I'm just gonna buzz them off. But just so you know, these are usually easier undone with the um, belt on. If the belt is already off, um, what you can do is you can get a big pair of channel locks and a rag, and really big pair of channel locks and a rag, or wedge something into one of the holes and hold it. Or there is, I believe, I think that's about a 10 millimeter Allen in the center. Or maybe it's not 10, it's probably, I think it looks like eight millimeter. And what you can do is, if it's hard to wedge, you can just stick the Allen in there. Now it looks like it's a nine, so it's an odd size. So 10 doesn't fit, eight doesn't fit. So you can either find a nine millimeter Allen or like I always do, you can leave the belt on and crack them free, hold it with your hand and leave the belt on, um, wedge something through the holes, get a huge massive pair of channel locks and put a rag around it so you don't score it and undo the six millimeters. Or like my favorite is I use an impact and just buzz them off. So I'm gonna undo that. Another thing I need to undo is the tensioner, which is a 10 millimeter Allen, which this one I've already loosened up. So this is pretty easy right here. Um, you can use a 10 millimeter Allen socket. They have socket sets. Um, I'm just using this key because it's easier to help show you guys. So that's one of the things that comes out of the way. Like I said, I'll come back to that. Uh, another thing we need to get off, we want to leave the pulley on, by the way. The crank pulley we want to leave on. Uh, another thing we want to go ahead and get off is this whole assembly here. I got the power steering pulley off. So now we want to get these covers off before we get the um, pulley right here for the fan. Um, these are held on by one, two, three, five millimeter Allens. And this one over here is held over by one, two. So these are already loosened. So we get these undone. And you'll find out if you try to undo this first, it'll wedge behind the cover. So we undo those three and the cover comes off. This is when you can start seeing if you got major oil leaks. Um, need something more than a valve cover gasket. Usually if you have some oil soot down here, it's usually a valve cover gasket. Some other things that can leak can be the um, variable timing uh, adjusters right here. There's a gasket under those, a little more complicated. It's, uh, you gotta take the valve cover off. Um, the cam seals could be leaking. Generally if they're dry, I generally don't bother replacing them. Um, but I'll show you how you would replace them if yours are leaking. And if you wanna replace them regardless, you can as well. So that covers off. This cover is two more five millimeters. Okay, now at this point you can get this pulley assembly off. To get this off, there's two six millimeter bolts, one Allen here, one Allen there. And then there's another six millimeter through here. The six millimeter through here, you usually have to use an Allen key or something longer than like an Allen socket. That Allen socket I was using obviously, you know, gives you more room. So this needs something with length to get up in there. And you get that undone. So that needs to be completely undone. This needs to be completely undone down here and here. Like I said, I've already broken a lot of these bolts free. So we got one, two, they come out. The other two get stuck behind the pulley. But this one right here, you need to loosen all those all the way. Then there's one more bolt that holds it in place. And you wanna do that one last, because what happens is that one will let wedge itself behind the pulley if you haven't undone all the others. So let me get this one all the way undone. And this one is a five millimeter right here. This is the last one. You'll see you end up going right through a hole. You can use an Allen on that or a socket like I did. So one bolt, two bolt, one hidden bolt back in here, usually an Allen key, six, mil, 
six millimeter, and then the five millimeter that's hidden, and then this comes off. Now you're starting to see more of the timing belt, and you, we can now see the water pump. The, the last cover to come off is this cover, and it's held on with two snaps, almost like your air box would be held together. And that just comes out. You can see how it slips in. So now the covers are off. It's a good time. Now, if you want to clean it all up, spray it down with brake cleaner, um, do that. Um, so we got the water pump. We got one of the idler pulleys right here. We got the tensioner pulley, and then the tensioner assembly goes down here. And I'm not undoing this yet, because this is a good time now to mark everything and make sure we can put it back right. Like I said before, we don't need the alignment bar. In my, my opinion, the alignment bar kind of gets in your way. Um, so what we got to do is got to get everything lined up. Uh, another item to point out though is the thermostat sits right here behind this cover and I'll go through that in a minute. This is a 2000, the cover is aluminum. The newer ones, uh, 01 or so and up, these are plastic so you got to be very careful with them. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this crank, the crankshaft, which with this bolt on the center right here, which is a 25 millimeter 12 point socket, you can have an open end but it's a 12 point and you want to turn it clockwise and what you're looking for is there's a small line on this pulley and there's an arrow right here and what you're trying to do is get that line perfectly lined up with that arrow and when that line is perfectly lined up with the arrow once it's perfectly almost got it You gotta turn it slow, it's gonna to wanna to go fast at times. When you get it close, you just wanna rock it and get it lined up. So at this point, if you had one of those alignment bars, what it would do is it would drop into the two holes for each cam gear. And if you look, the big key with the cams is you gotta make sure the crank's lined up here perfectly. And then on these, you gotta have the biggest holes towards the inside. If the biggest hole's on the outside, you gotta turn this a whole 180 degree, uh, 360 degrees again and get this line back up. So you could have the alignment bar. I don't like doing that. I, at this point, now that everything's lined up, we know the crank's lined up and we got this lined up. What we want to do now is I use wide out and at this point I'll mark it, but I need to mark it underneath because once you start doing the time belt, you're going to have this off. So now that I got this lined up, I need to get this pulley off. You do not undo this big bolt. You undo all these small six millimeters and you got to make sure you don't turn the pulley. It needs to stay lined up. So once all the bolts are undone, make sure it's still lined up here and then these should look like that. And at that point we can get in there and then make all of our marks. And It's common sense. If we mark everything and go ahead and mark it before we take it apart and we put it back together, we'll be fine. So now that I got all the bolts undone for the pulley, all the six millimeters, this is where you make sure you didn't move the crank too much and you double check and make sure maybe put a bolt in there loosely or two and make sure it's still lined up with the, uh, the timing mark here and then these should both be sitting pretty flat. Like I said, since you're going to mark it, it's not as critical. I mean, it's pretty much common sense. If you mark it before you take it apart and you put it back the way it was timing wise, the cam will be in, the, both the cams will be in time with the crank. So the next thing you got to undo is these two 10 millimeters for the lower cover. And this is when you can see if your crank seal, your front crank seal is leaking. It would be behind this pulley. And to get this off, if the crank seal was leaking, you'd see a lot of oil down here. This is just residue. This is just normal wear and tear. But you would be dripping down, leaking down pretty heavily if the front crank seal was leaking. And to replace that, you'd undo this 25 millimeter uh, bolt right here. You probably need an impact gun. Uh, maybe you need to put the car in gear if you need to break it free. This is pretty tight. Um, but you got to be careful to move this stuff around once you got the, the pulleys off. You turn the crank when the, the cams are sitting still, you can ram the pistons into the valves. But to get this off, you, you get this bolt off. I'd recommend loosening it up before taking the belt off. Um, obviously, you should mark everything before we even do that. But what you would do is you'd undo that and then you'd get some longer bolts. This is an 8 millimeter by 1.25 thread and you basically use a steering wheel puller. If you don't know what a steering wheel puller is, go down to your hardware store 
um, or actually your car parts store or your tool guy like Max, Snap-on or Matco and check out a steering wheel puller and what it would do is it would bolt two bolts down and you'd have one pushing in the center. I'll try to set mine up later and show you how it would look if you were trying to change it. Okay, so now that we got that apart, what you do is you just want to take some white out and you just want to mark everything. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it and then I'm going to focus in and show you how I mark it. So once everything's marked, you just got to make sure all the marks line up again you know, to their best. Obviously the marks are not going to be perfect because this belt is used and it's stretched. So it's going to vary just a little bit, but it's obvious when you're off a tooth. When you're off a tooth, it's not even close. So I'm going to mark everything and then we'll continue with disassembly. Okay, I'm now going to show you all the timing marks that I did. Um, you may ask or wonder why not buy the tool or whatever. Obviously the tool will work. Um, I came from a background of working on, you know, a different two or three or four different cars a day. And if we bought the tool for every timing belt we did on all the different motors, we'd probably go broke buying the tools. So most cars do not have a tool. Some cars just have timing marks that they have. And those marks usually don't work that great. So anytime you do a service like this, it's just easy to just mark everything very thoroughly and make sure it goes back the way it was because even if you look at this carefully those two pieces right here are not perfectly level so if you put the alignment bar in there it would cause some slack in the belt and it would actually be awkward so what I did is I marked the crank one you can see where I marked it right there just on the back side of the pulley and then right there on the line and then I marked it right there and right there. Obviously you only need one mark. I like to do several just in case something gets sprayed off when I'm cleaning something with brake cleaner or whatever. And then here is the passenger side cam gear. So I mark it like that to line it up with that tooth. Mark it there. Obviously that's a far mark but you get the point. There's another one and there's another one. Just gives you lots of point of reference. Makes it easier. Um, we got that mark on the driver's side. That mark's probably the best one. And then we got that mark right there. So anytime you do this, you can t do a time belt on any car if you can't find the marks or don't have the tool by doing it this way. And you just got to take your time and be careful. But this always works great. If you got a car that already, maybe you just yanked the timing belt out indiscriminately, um, you didn't uh, worry about keeping too much attention. At this point, you just got to be careful if everything's out of alignment you got to be careful that you turn the crank or the cams and force them and then bend the valves because they will hit so what you would do is if the belt was just yanked off and nobody paid attention what I can do what you could do is you could just take a straight edge you know just a metal bar from here all the way across to the other side so you would have a straight edge that went all the way across like that and you stood back and get those two cams flat with the big side towards the inside you see a big hole, little hole, the big hole towards the inside. And you just lay a straight edge and get them pretty flat. And then down at the crank, you would just put the cover back on and the pulley back on and line it up with the timing mark. There is a spot near the back of the block where in the manual it will actually tell you to put a plug in there. But once again, that's another tool you probably don't need to buy. Um, I would just go here. I'd put the plastic cover on, put the pulley on, line up the marks. I'd get a straight edge and, you know, get it nice and straight across get them lined up and you're gonna be good I've had to do this for a couple friends who on their s4 they actually just threw the belt off um, at that point it might be an easier to get the bar if you're one of those people who just yanked it all apart real quick but uh, hopefully you didn't do that but that would be the easiest way to find time if you just straight edge get it good big holes on the center throw the, the bottom cover and pulley back on and get everything lined up and then remark it so okay the next thing we need to do is get the tensioner off and get this belt off. At this point, it doesn't matter. We can just take it all apart. Stuff can move around. No big deal. We got marks that tell us where it goes. So you don't want it to just move a ton, but you you know you want to keep it good. So we, what we have here is generally you can just unbolt these. We got a 17 millimeter here for the idler pulley. So we got a 17 millimeter there we'd undo. And then right here, it's a six millimeter Allen for the tensioner. And then we have a 12 millimeter for the tensioner rocker arm. And then we have three tens for the tensioner. If you just undo the three tens for the tensioner, it's gonna loosen all the pressure. So we're gonna undo the three tens for the tensioner, 12 millimeter for the rocker, 
the 6 millimeter for this pulley and the 17 millimeter for this pulley because we're replacing those. And then we can take the belt off and get the belt out of the way and then we can get to doing the thermostat and the water pump. Now we got all these tensioners and pulleys off, so now we can get the timing belt off. Um, you can see at this point you need to get a little slack and you can just kind of walk it out. Get off there. Get it off there and then kind of walk it out of the crank. And now the time belt's out of the way. Okay, so now that that's all apart, the next thing we need to get to is the water pump and the thermostat. We'll do the water pump next. To get to the water pump, there's a couple bolts that are in the way of accessing the water pump fully to get full access on removing it. So what you need to do is one of the items is the oil dipstick which is held in by this 12 millimeter nut right here. And once that's undone, you usually can move it forward and you can rotate it. You just kind of twist it and walk it out. So that's your oil dipstick. You want to clean all this up and you can see there's a, a, a O-ring on here. Usually before I reassemble, I just put a real thin layer of uh, silicone on it or you can buy a new O-ring. So now that that's off, we need to get access. There's this bolt right up in here that's behind the power steering pump. And you got to unbolt the power steering pump partially. It's not a big deal. No fluid leaks out. It's, it's not nothing major. Um, the power steering pump, the bolts you need to get to are, there's one right here, six millimeter Allen. And there's another one right here on the front. So you got one down here and you got one right here. There's another one though that is hidden back here. Move that diverter valve out of the way. It's right down here. You got to come down from the top up from the boot and hook and get it out. I'm going to put a a ratchet on it and get it out of there and then um, I'll show you how it looks. Okay this is that third bolt for the power steering pump. Uh, you can see we undid the, the one right here and we undid the one right here. So the third one is sitting right there and I just come in with a wobbly, a six millimeter socket, Allen socket, and an extension and I break it free. One key, make sure that you are fully seated into that Allen. You do not want to strip it. So I'm going to unbolt that Allen and then I'll have room to get in and get the water pump out of there. One more note, this is a good time if you have a stock F hose, if you have a 2000 or an early 01, you'll have a rubber hose here, it's F shaped. It's a good time to change it, it's pretty easy to get to at that point, they tend to rip. And that's just a pointer for you guys. Now that the power steering pump's loosened by those two front bolts and the one in back, you can see the power steering pump, pump moves up and what that does, that gives you access to a bolt sitting right up in there. So that's a 10 millimeter bolt. You have that bolt, and then you have, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bolts, and one more nut. And you got to remember you took one nut off earlier for the dipstick. So I'm going to loosen all these bolts up, and once they're off, you'll be able to just pop the water pump off. The water pump doesn't come off earlier, Some easy, I mean. Sometimes you can get in there with like a pry bar and kind of just give it a little pop, and it'll pop off. At this point, you want to have a drain pan. It's going to make a mess. So when you come back, I'm going to undo all the bolts for the water pump, pop it off. Okay, I just undid all the bolts and I pulled on it and it popped free. A lot of fluid everywhere. So once again, like I said, make sure you have a good uh, spill pan. And when you're getting the water pump out, just lift the power steering pump a little bit. And now we'll see why everybody wants to change the water pump before the normal stock interval. I think the owner's manual says 110,000. The reason everybody wants to change them prior is this plastic impeller, um, for whatever reason, this plastic uh, impeller, the bearing design, these things would seize up. And when these bearings would seize up, it would take out your timing belt. And a lot of people wouldn't notice uh, the leaky or noisy water pump right away. So they'd drive it and then boom, bye bye timing belt. And then when the timing belt would go, all your valves would go. So it's never really been the timing belt, it's the water pump, plastic impeller. So make sure when you get your new water pump, it has a metal impeller. 
Um, I think most of the plastic ones should not be uh, around anymore. I haven't seen one since about 2005. Um, but the OEMs were plastic and some of the early replacements were plastic. So make sure you get a, a steel impeller. Another thing to worry about, um, you see the gasket. We got lucky. The gasket stuck to the water pump. Most S4s seem to do that. A lot of other cars don't. So at this point, make sure there's no gasket material on the gasket surface and get in there with a razor blade, scrape it up and clean it up before you put the water pump on. And since this is out of the way, we might as well just go straight into doing the um, thermostat. Thermostat right here is held in by a couple bolts. It's right behind this cover. And like I said, this is a 2000, so the cover is aluminum. On the newer ones, I think it was somewhere in 01, they don't have an exact cutoff. They have a lot of bleed overs, so you can't just say an 01 and a half would have a plastic. More than likely it would. Uh, but this cover on a 2000 is aluminum, and it's held in with only two bolts right here. On the 01 and a half, on the 01 and a half, there's a third bolt right down here. So 01 and a half or 01. There's a plastic cover, it has two bolts here, and it has another bolt right here. So this is a 2000, it has the aluminum cover. So be careful with the plastic cover as well. Obviously being plastic, it's easier to crack. And this seal looks like stuck pretty good. That's a pretty good seal. So this thermostat would have sat like that. You want the bleeder up top to bleed the air out. And then the O-ring would sit in like that. So we got this one out. We're gonna put the new thermostat in and a new o-ring in and then you always want to inspect the surface here to make sure this isn't messed up on your especially if you got the plastic style in the newer ones here's what's in the timing belt kit you have the water pump with steel impeller metal impeller you got the regular ribbed belt and we got the tooth belt for the timing we got the thermostat and o-ring we got the hydraulic tensioner we got the tensioner lever the tensioner pulley and the idler pulley and like I said if needed uh, we can set you up with two cam seals and a crank seal okay now we're ready to stick the thermostat back in you, you want to stick it in the spring side towards the rear this little bleeder hole up top and then the o-ring goes around should fit in there pretty snug it shouldn't come out if you want you could stuff it in there with a little screwdriver or something then next, like I said, you want to check the surface here, make sure it's not marred up. You want to put the cover on. And since this is a 2000, this one only has the two bolts that go there and there. So you got the two bolts. And if it was the plastic style, the newer plastic style, you would have a third bolt sitting down here. So just remember that if you got the plastic style, don't forget the third bolt. So I'm going to snug these up. And these torque to 10 newton meters, which is about 8 foot pounds. This kind of stuff, anytime you're dealing with sealing, I recommend torquing it. So. That's 10 newton meters, right around 8 foot pounds. And then if you had the plastic style, you go ahead and lock that other one down. So next, I got to get the water pump on there and get it torqued down. So now I got the water pump ready for install. This is the, the gasket here. What I did with the gasket, you don't have to do this, but this is the practice I've done over the years. I just take some of that black RTV silicone and I just rub it on like a thin layer. You can't even really tell it's on there. You don't need a lot of silicone. You don't need stuff oozing everywhere. I just put a thin layer. I just walk it on. I wipe my hands clean. It just makes it easier. It just tends to seal any imperfection. I never have leaks doing that, anything coolant related. So you can do that. So the water pump is kind of fun to sneak in because you got to make sure the gasket lines up and everything and the power string pump gets out of the way. Those studs are good alignment pieces. If the gasket gets a little bit out of, out of, out of whack, you know, straighten it out by hand. And before you start sticking the bolts in, you want to look in there and really check and make sure the gasket's lined up. Start dropping the bolts in, and I'm going to come back when the bolts are all in. But at this point, you just make sure the gasket's lined up, nothing's sticking out, the gasket's not folded. You know, really look around the perimeter and get all the bolts in, and then you'll end up torquing those as well.
to 10 newton meters, which is about eight foot pounds, and then I will come back. Okay, now that I got all the bolts back in, I'm gonna make sure that these are torqued to 10 newton meters, eight foot pounds, like I said before. All good. So now you can go ahead and bolt the power steering pump back down. You got the two bolts here, and you got the one bolt coming down. Those are an eight millimeter by 1.25 thread, which is generally about 18 foot pounds or 25 newton meters of torque. You know, generally you can just tighten those. It's, it's not, you know, sealing anything. So these two bolts, the one coming down, get the power string pump locked back down. And I will then show you the best way to, to change the seals. What you would do in order to replace the crank seal. Um, this car, like I said, it's not oozing, leaking. I mean, this is all residue from other stuff, and it's mainly because it's wet. But um, this is a steering wheel puller, and this is what you would use. You'd have to get this bolt off first. It's a 25 millimeter 12 point bolt. And this bolt is very, very tight. You gotta hold the crank somehow. Um, usually a really, really strong impact can knock it off. Um, but you gotta be careful. If it turns, you can bend the valves. So I recommend when you undo this bolt that the belt's on. So do this up front if you plan on changing the seal. So go ahead and you get the bolt off, which I'm leaving it on because this car's not gonna be done. Once the bolt's off, you're going to have all this area free right here and then you put these two bolts through the steering wheel puller 8 millimeter by 125 thread pitch you get those ran down and then you run the center bolt down and what this will do is just push off the center and pull it off and this, once again this bolt is gone so it'll pull off then you can go in there with a seal puller and wedge the seal out and then knock a new one in you know slowly walking it in or the right socket seals are kind of a pain in the butt so unless you got the right tools you might want to be careful you might do more damage than good if it's not leaking um, so yeah that's how you do it on the crank and then I'll show you on the cams but once again please remember this will be off to take this apart and you want to have the belt on so the cranks not turning and smacking into valves and then causing problems later like small misfires at idle and whatnot Okay, now I'm showing you how to remove the cam pulley if you wanted to do your cam seals. This is the bolt that I removed. It's a 16 millimeter. Once again, you should bust this loose uh, when the time belt's on so you don't have to worry about moving the cam around and smacking the valves. So, like I said, if you're gonna do the seals, undo the two cam bolts and do this bolt before even taking the time belt off. You don't have to unloosen them. Just crack them, get them free and loosened up. It just makes it easier. You're not moving crap around and bending stuff up. So, then once it's all apart, then you would come back you completely remove it and to get this pulley off you would just use a two jaw puller and it would just you could see it's got little hooks it would just reach in behind and then this would drive on the center of the camshaft and if you need to you could always stick a socket or something right here as a spacer to drive so you just tighten that bolt down and it'll walk and pull this off and then at that point you would then you know use a cam seal puller and then knock in a new seal it's uh, you know, a little tricky. If you don't have seal drivers, you can use deep sockets and other items to get in there and change the seal. But generally, if it's not leaking, I don't, I don't worry about it. Uh, they generally don't just all of a sudden go and start spewing oil everywhere. They uh, take their time. And just in case you're wondering, here's what a seal puller looks like. You would just get in there, once the pulley's off, you would get in there and pop, you rock and pop the seal. You gotta be careful, you don't wanna scuff the surfaces in there but that's how you pop the seal out and then you can put the seal in with a large enough socket that would go around or sometimes you have to walk it around with a drift um, you know or go buy the expensive tool it's your choice but uh, like I said uh, that's the pointers on doing the cam seals and the crank seal so now we are ready for um, putting the timing belt back on and getting all these other pulleys back on and what you would do also when these bolts are being ran back in like I said before, after you change the seals, you would then, you know, you could probably snug them up right now, line everything up, you know, you could tap the pulleys down, get them down all the way, and then go ahead and do all the final torque once the belt is uh, fully installed, just so you don't have to worry about moving anything around. Um, if you feel comfortable torquing it sitting there, you can. You can hold this with a large set of channel locks, like a pair of these. Um, and you just obviously use a lot of rags because you don't want to scuff the surface. If you screw in this surface up, you're going to eat up a belt. You can use that or stick something, wedge something into these, like a spanner wrench into these holes. Now that the water pump and everything else is back in, um, we're going to put the dipstick back in place. Like I said, there's an O-ring right here. 
Um, you could probably either replace it or just stick a thin layer of silicone around it. I've always been able to find just sticking a thin layer of silicone around it and it's good to go. So we insert that back in, give it a little twist and we got to sneak it in behind and through right here and it's going to drop on this stud. Another thing you need to remember there is a little plastic grommet. So we're going to line up the grommet, the stud. And once you get it through the stud, then you're just going to put the nut back on. That's another 10 newton meter, 8 foot pounds. As you can see, I got the dipstick back on, the 10 millimeter nuts back in place. I put the idler pulley, the new one in. It's a 17 millimeter bolt. It torques to 33 foot pounds. So this 17 millimeter bolt torques to 33 foot pounds, which is about 45 newton meters. And then this is the tensioner arm right here that presses on the tensioner. You want to make sure it still moves after it's torqued. You torque this. This is a 12 millimeter head and you torque this to about 18 foot-pounds which is pretty standard for this size thread which is an 8 millimeter by 1.25 thread so that goes to about 18 foot-pounds so you got that the next thing you need to put on is the new tensioner and once the tensioner is in place we are going to wait to put everything else in but we're going to put the tensioner roller in and we're going to try to then put the belt on And here's the new tensioner roller. Um, it usually comes shipped with a little piece of uh, clear like plastic on here to hold the washer in place. So you want to make sure the washer's in there, the pin, and the bolt. And the pin ends up hitting here. So you want to make sure the pins face downward when you put this on. And there's a washer on each side. And this is that six millimeter Allen. And you could tighten this down and that ends up moving like that and this, this arm pushes on it. So we'll torque that down to 18 foot-pounds and you'll see that there is a hex in here, that's an eight millimeter hex. In case you need to hold tension um, or check anything, you can use that to move the tensioner around. At this point, I'm ready to stick the belt on. Um, there's a couple things that'll help you do that. Having a 16 millimeter open end handy will help to move the, the pulley a little bit. You got to sometimes move the pulley to help get the belt on because it is going to be a tight fit. Having a 25 millimeter open end or a 25 millimeter ratchet for the crank bolt will help to bump that around. So now I'm going to get this on and you're going to start, since the motor is going to turn this way, this side is going to be tight. So I start with this pulley first. And you gotta, when you put this on, you've got to keep it kind of snug because it's going to want to like bind up. But you'll be able to drop it in, and it should be able to get on all the teeth. So we got it on. This one goes through that idler. And then this point, you got to keep this kind of tight. You'll see it's really close to going on. And if you look, it's still really close to my amount adjustment, my marks in all the spots. So this is where, since it's really close to going on, actually I got it on there. But if you need a little bit of slack, you just kind of remember where it goes. You just give it a little bit of slack, mainly to help get it on there. And then once you got it on there, you can go ahead and just, you know, take the slack back out right here once the slack's back out. So you get that, look at everything's lined up still in the crank and that gear. Then we come across here and this is where the fun begins because now this needs to stay tight. So tight, tight. We look, we're still pretty lined up. We're still pretty lined up. And you got this, you know, tight. If not, you can always give it a little bump, keep it snug. And then you got to do the same thing with the other one. And if you look, it's really close and it looks like it's off a little bit, so you can bump it. It obviously is going to get bumped when, when it's worked on. You can try one spot and then see how it lines up. When it's tight, just kind of do it like that. 
And if you look, that one, it's almost to the other tooth. And it's still got a little slack, so it looks like that's too far the other way. So it looks like I gotta move this pulley down. Cause like I said, this is gonna be a little tighter because it's a new belt. So if anything, everything's gonna register a, a little bit clockwise because this is a new belt, so it's not stretched out. So everything's gonna be nice and tight. So if it's off a little bit from the previous marks, it's gonna be twisted a little bit clockwise. So now I got that on. So now what we do is we make sure everything's tight. So we can use this, make sure you don't bust this bolt free, but we should get in there and make sure this is good. So this is tight, this is tight, and this is tight. And that's when you double check all your marks and see how close they are. And like I said, if they're gonna be off, you want them off a hair to the clockwise. Cause this is gonna be a new belt, it's gonna be tighter. It's gonna pull it down and in. So I think I got it. So it's just, it's just a hair down. That one's about right. This one's about right. So now I think I'm good. So if it looks pretty good, you can go ahead and get the tensioner on here. And the tensioner is held down with three 10 millimeter bolts. The torque to our favorite eight foot pounds or 10 newton meter. And if you need some slack on this, what you can do is you get an eight millimeter Allen socket. And with that eight millimeter Allen socket or Allen wrench, you can put it in here. You can actually use a wrench and give yourself slack to work with here. It just makes it nice and tight. Um, and you could go ahead and hold that and run it through the rotation once. But that also works as a great tool for repinning it. So what I do, I've done this enough. I generally, you know, everything actually lines up better when I tighten it. So it looks pretty good. I think we're good. And like I said, don't make, make sure you don't loosen this when you do that. So it looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to tighten up these three 10 millimeters on the, on the new tensioner. We got three 10 millimeters, and those are going to be torqued to 10 newton meters or eight, eight foot pounds. Now that I think I got it, I can pull the pin on the tensioner. You're scared, okay? What if I screwed up and I got to recompress the tensioner? I'll show you that in a minute. So I pull the pin on the tensioner, and what if you then, you know, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to run it through rotation. And what that is, is you turn it by hand, and you, you want to go, you need to go 720 degrees, and you make sure you'll feel compression, which is good. You can feel, feel the cylinders compressing, and you'll keep going. As long as you don't feel like a mechanical halt, you'd have to be off several teeth for it to bind. But you need to go, that was about 360 degrees right there. So if you notice, this didn't turn all the way back to the marks. So we need to go another 360 degrees, which is 720 degrees. And the reason for that is that the crank spins two times for every one time the cam spins. If you ever look up on how a four-stroke motor works, it makes sense. But uh, so I'm going 720 degrees. And that's what all my marks are for. So we got it. We're getting closer. You gotta be careful not to go too far. You need to make sure you have tension as you approach the marks. So I'm looking at all my marks on the crank. As I go, they look pretty close. My cam marks are pretty much good. And then at that point, now that I've, I've kind of got them all looking pretty good, I'm looking and my cam, both of the cams and the crank is good. So I'm in good shape. However, let's say we do that and we're off one tooth. It's really obvious. One of these pulleys is like off one tooth. Um, what you can do is you can take this tool and you can actually go like this and if you keep pressure on this up, you can see it slowly compressing the tensioner and then you can stick the pin back in and try it again. So this comes in handy. But yeah, 720 degrees of rotation and then double check your marks. And if you want, I will go ahead and show you these marks. If you look, that's pretty darn lined up. 
pretty darn lined up pretty darn lined up pretty darn lined up pretty close we got that one that one and that one and as you can see if it's off a tooth I mean this mark will be sitting all the way up here or down here so you gotta you know mess it up pretty bad to get it off a tooth so yeah all the marks are good I went through 720 degrees of rotation I'm tight here I'm tight here the big thing is everything's got to be tight. I got the pin out, everything's torqued. If you want, go back and double check all your torques. The timing belt is basically installed. That is all you need to do. Now I went ahead and I already got this cover back on. This is two 10 millimeters. I mean, you can just tighten these by and now, but they are, you know, a eight, eight foot pound or 10 newton meter. And if you look on the crank pulley, it has a, a notch here and a notch here, like almost ears. And what those are is they line up with the crank. So at this point, you can get that on there, and then you're going to put all these six millimeter Allen head bolts back in. And these being an eight millimeter by one two five bolt, they will all get torqued right to about they say about 20 newton meters, uh, about 15 foot pounds in the book. I generally go 15 to 18 on these kind of bolts. Um, if you're worried about these coming loose, you can put some Loctite on them. But generally, I mean, I've never had these come off, so torque these to 15 to 18. And then we can start putting the rest of the covers back on. And we're pretty much home free. Now we're pretty much ready just to assemble everything. I got the crank pulley back on. I ran it through one more rotation. I lined up the marks there, double checked all my marks up here, and made sure this was parallel you know across the top of the the two you know with a bar you can just use any you know broomstick heck that would work anything that you could hold up level and have a helper look um, you know this is just how you do it yourself man and save a couple bucks so it's all done um, now we obviously got to put the covers back on the uh, the fan you know has got to be turned counterclockwise you know all the same stuff needs to be done in reverse and then once it's all together, you got the front end back on, the radiator back on, everything. When you fill the car with coolant, you may find it's kind of hard to get all the air out. What a lot of people aren't aware of is on these cars, luckily this being all apart, it's easy to get to. I'll move this diverter out of the way. But right here, by the dipstick, it's hard to see, there is a five millimeter Allen. This is a factory bleeder screw so what you do before you start filling it, or you can go ahead and fill it, and you'll find out you don't, can't stick a lot in that plastic tank. Um, what you do is you crack and unbolt this bleeder screw. You don't take it all the way out. You unscrew it till about you know an eighth of an inch of it is exposed. And then what happens is it bleeds the air out. So what you can do is you fill the reservoir, wait like five minutes, you'll see it slowly come down, and you just keep filling it. And what you'll eventually see is you'll see water come out from here. Once you start seeing water come from here and then it'll drain down the valley of the block and actually drip on the ground so don't be alarmed. But once you start getting coolant and water coming out of here when you've been filling the reservoir you can close this up. It may take you know five ten minutes of waiting for it to bleed through but when you do that you basically bled the whole system so then you just top it off and run it and you may only have to once it's got, gotten hot once you've started it you probably only have to top it off like a little bit like one more time so that saves a lot of time with filling it and getting it hot is cracking this bleeder screw when you're filling it before you even start it and as soon as water starts coming out of here you're good and uh, then close it back up and just be careful make sure you get that allen all the way down in there as you can see it goes pretty deep if you're one of those people and you're it's kinda hard to get in there and you're getting it kinda crooked and lazy and you strip it out that's no good Get it all the way in there. If you have to, smack it with a, you know, tap it with a hammer. Make sure it's all the way in. So loosen it up. That'll let all the air out. Once you got fluid coming out, you're pretty much full. Make top off the reservoir, and you'll be good. But yeah, you just put it back together, and that's your time belt job.
Now I'm going to give you a little more information about the uh, cam seals. Um, it's kind of critical when you do these. Um, if you don't want to have to use a, the cam lock bar, you got to follow the following steps before you use the puller and pull the gear off. Um, obviously the first thing you'll want to do is the bolt, the 16 millimeter bolt. And what you'll see is this is the thing that usually goes into the cam lock bar. You'll see it's keyed. And the issue with this is <clears throat> that you get this off. You'll see it's kind of tight. This is what orients and keeps it locked with the cam lock bar. Um, so if you don't want to use the cam lock bar, what you have to do before you put a puller on here and pull this off, you have to clearly, very clearly mark this cam in relation to the, the cam pulley. And this has to be precise. You might want to use a scribe or a little chisel and t tap it so it makes a perfect mark. Um, you need, maybe, maybe, maybe you want to make several marks because what happens as soon as you pop this off, which this one's already popped, it spins infinitely. So since it spins infinitely, you'll never be able to really get this on time without a cam lock bar because then you'll need a cam lock bar to hold the cams in place and then turn this until everything's right. So I'll also show you with the cam lock bar just so you know, but just remember before you pop this off, if you do not have a cam lock bar, you need to clearly mark this like very precise because this has to go exactly back where it was. Um, otherwise you'll have a little slop in the cams you might throw it out a couple degrees. Um, so mark it very, very well or get a cam lock bar if you want to do the cam seals. And you'll see the cam seals right there now for you to pop out and put back in. Uh, another thing about that is this little shield sometimes gets in the way. There's just three bolts that hold the shield on and then there's two nuts down here for the water pump that uh, hold it on as well. So if you can take the shield out it gives you a little more access. But um, that's the information about doing the cam seals. Once you pop these free, if you did not mark it in relation to the cam, you will need a cam lock bar. And I'm going to probably show you that in a minute, how the cam lock bar would work. If you uh, need to use the cam lock bar, you must put a crank stop in the crank to make sure the crank is lined up. Um, you can also make sure the crank is lined up by you know the pulley on the front of the motor like I showed you originally where you line up the lines on the pulley in relation to the uh, can the cover but um, this is the best way when you're going to use the cam lock bar you might as well go through the trouble of doing this um, this is down on the driver's side in the block you could see the um, turbo return line right here and usually the turbo charge pipe sits right here I took it out just to make it easier for you to see, but you can do it from right underneath the car. You'll see there's access right below here. So you just undo this 10 millimeter bolt. We just got to get this plug off. I've already loosened it, obviously. And then the next thing is you got to get this little plug out. You got to be careful. Um, you see I'm going to use some pliers here. It is plastic, so don't beat on it. Um, I'm going to be careful with it. Slowly pull it out. And you'll notice sometimes when you pull it out that, see the seal right here? The seal may stay in the block. You need to take that seal out of the block and make sure it stays with this piece. Um, I've been fine reusing this seal all the time, so no big deal. So now that this is out, and we know the crank is lined up on top dead center, and it's lined up with the marks, that means this tool right here that screws into this hole should go right into a hole in the crankshaft. And if you did it right, it should go right into the hole in the crate shaft and keep it lined up. If you're worried about how it's lined up, you can go in there with a flashlight and make sure that it looks like that's going to insert into the crank. And if you need to turn it a little bit, go ahead and turn it. So what you'll do is you just go in here with a flashlight, make sure you can see the crank, turn this in, make sure the crank's locked perfectly, and then we'll go do the portion for the cam lock bar. Once you got the crank lined up all the way, you'll notice that this is going to screw a lot further in and be lined up. And if you need the tool, feel free to contact JHM. You'll see how much further that one goes in now. So it's in there. And you just snug it up. And then when you're all done with the cam lock bar portion, you just pull that back out 
you put this this plug back in make sure the o-rings right here make sure the o-rings wet so it, it slips in and then just tighten up this uh, 10 millimeter head bolt that holds it in and that bolt will torque to uh, about 8 foot pounds 10 newton meters okay now I'm going to be putting the, the belt on this time now we're doing it when we're using the cam lock bar and you can see that these pulleys are loose you got to leave them just you get the keys on there you get the, the large piece on the inside and you get it so they just move both sides just barely move and then when you put the belt on it's going to be a little different because those are moving and then we're going to end up using the cam lock bar to key the cams based off of the center bolt portion so I'm going to get this on so now it's kind of cool you know obviously you got to buy the tool but you can see the cam move so you can just rotate it and pull it nice and tight because the crank's locked and you just pull this nice and snug and then get this on the other cam and you can just turn that cam until it's right see so you can turn the cam and loosen it, tighten it, whatever. So what you got to do then is now we got to put tension on it since the cams are able to move a little bit. So you want to crack, make sure these are cracked a little bit. Make sure the bolts are a little loose and the pulleys move freely. So now that the crank's locked in place, what we'll do is we'll end up getting this back in here. The tensioner. We'll bolt the tensioner up and then we're going to release the tensioner and then what you end up doing is you end up putting an 8 millimeter in, the, in here, an 8 millimeter Allen, and you apply 15 newton meters of torque. And you really get the belt snug and tight. And once the belt's snug and tight, we'll lock down these cams. We'll, I'm going to put the cam lock bar on next, though. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to use the cam lock bar. You'll see that you got the big hole towards the inside, big hole towards the inside. I got the tensioner in. First thing I'm going to do is um, pull the pin on the tensioner. Then I got to get this lined up. You see, big and little. Get that one lined up. And sometimes you might need to tap it a little bit to get it on. There we go. So now it's on. Crank is locked. Cam is locked. Make sure these are tight if you have an adjustable piece. So now what we need to do is there's this eight millimeter Allen hole. And what you'll notice. is you can pull it tight and you want to do about 15 newton meters because you'll notice everything's really tight now all the belts are very very tight because these are loose and these are allowed to rotate so make sure the belt's tight on all sides you want to hold about 15 and now once you hold about the 15 newton meters which is 11 foot pounds you're going to need to lock down these cams right now I just use a regular wrench to lock them in because I'm using my torque wrench to tighten it. So I'm going to lock them down. And then once they're locked down, then you need to torque them to 55, foot, uh, 55 newton meters, which is about 40 foot pounds. So I got tension on it. I got them locked down, you know, so they're not going to move around. And now I just got to do a final torque. And when I was putting extra tension on the belt, I was going the loosening direction. Um, normally, you don't want to do that with a click-type torque wrench. Um, you normally would want a torque wrench that has a little um, gauge on it to help you do the 15 newton meters or 11 foot-pounds. Or you can just do it by feel if you feel comfortable. But there, that's 40 foot-pounds, 55 newton meters. 40 foot-pounds, 55 newton meters. So the cans are locked, the crank's locked. The belt's nice and tight on all sides. So now we just got to pull the cam lock bar off. And it may not come off easy since we were torquing on it. So if you got to pry it off, you pry it off with a pry bar. Um, you probably tap it off. And then once you get this off, um, you'll take the crank piece back off and you're done. That's how you would do it with the cam lock bar.